I'd like to bring in President Obama's former economic advisor, Professor Austin Goldsby, a good friend of mine, also a really smart guy, except for when it comes to things like elections and politics and the economy. I'm teasing Austin. I'm watching the election returns come in. I'm watching President Trump doing very well. No one expected it. The polls were wrong. But here's also I was watching. I was watching the stock markets rally in overnight trading. Clearly, Wall Street wants a President Trump. Am I wrong? Well, I, th I, I don't know. Um, we, we'd have to go ask who was trading at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I know when it looked like in the polls Biden was going to win, then the stock market went up, and then Trump pulled ahead, and it looked like Trump was going to win, and then the stock market went up, and now we're in this weird nether world where we're waiting on the votes and the stock market went up. So it feels yeah. like the stock market just wants to go well, up. Well, well, let me, let me, and so I, I'm thinking about that as well. And, and cause we, I went to bed at around three in the morning, stock market was up. It went, it went from too close to call. Woke up this morning, a lot of people were saying it was gonna be a Biden win. And here's my point, stock market continued to go up per your point, but I realized it wasn't about who the winner was. It was about who the, the yes. Senate. It was about the, the fact that the Senate was going to remain oh. in Republican hands. So therefore, we weren't going to get those massive Biden tax increases, no matter what, even if he is president. Eh. Look, maybe, like I say, well, I'm not in the heads of, the, of these you know, billionaire investors, uh, but I do note that before the election, when they started saying, well, if there's a blue wave, then we're going to get a whole bunch of stimulus, the market seemed to like that. And then... If they find out that there's not going to be a blue wave and Republicans are going to retain control of the Senate, then the stock market like that. It is kind of like, you know, your dog wants to go for a trip and wants to come home. You know, it's, it's, the stock market wants to go up. That's what I'm most. Yeah, it it, de it definitely has been on, on, a, on a path. But I, again, I think, poli I think policy really drives stocks and the equities and, and you know, the economy going forward and the, and the policy. I mean, how do you. Uh, this is so important, and I know it gets a little wonky. I hope my audience stays with me here, but capital gains. So the investor class, and they, 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 that's basically everyone we're talking to. We're talking to people with 401ks, people who invest in stocks. If, if President Biden becomes President Biden, he's going to increase capital gains, almost doubling capital gains. Who in their right mind is going to pay double taxes and go invest in something like that? Instead, go, go put your money somewhere else. Well, when you say somewhere else, I, I, I wouldn't characterize, that's not exactly what the plan is. As you know, Joe Biden wants to cut taxes for ordinary Americans, and the taxes would go up for people making more than $400,000 a year, and only on the part of their income that is above $400,000 a year. No, no, I'm talking, so about, I'm talking about capital gains, that, Austin, to, to okay, anyone. But on no matter who you gains, are, it doesn't that matter. If applies you're, if, only. If, if you're a hot dog vendor with, with a 401k, if your if your if your capital if your capital gains short term capital gains profit profiteer okay, you are going to get four hundred one k's don't pay capital gains tax no they're, but if you capital I, gains tax I, free. I said so I said if you're not apply you're a hot dog vendor if you're a hot dog vendor who bought some yeah. Exxon stock and they get capital gains you're going to go from twenty percent only up to if 40%. you make more than four hundred thousand dollars a year you sell a lot of hot dogs if you're going to pay higher capital hey, listen, gains man, tax hey listen this is hot dog capital of America right here in D C you know no. Uh, Chicago, we love hot dogs. What, what do you? <laughs> so, so you're going to tell me we're going to sit here and talk because we're going to bring you back afterwards and take a look at, at, at whoever. But a, a, a President Biden is going to be good for the economy. Is this what we're saying? And why? I think he's going to be good for the economy if he's the president. And look, you know, I'm a Democrat. I, I support him. I hope that that Joe Biden wins. I mean, we're, it's still up in the air at this point. I think the focus. We, we didn't have as great a policy focus this election as, as what I wanted. But the policy focus, I thought, should have been Biden's view is stop giving big tax cuts to billionaires and big corporations. Start giving the tax cuts and the investments for, for ordinary workers. That was this kind of his approach that it's not you shouldn't rely on trickle down. When the middle class is strong, that's what's driven growth in the country in the past. So that's why I think he's going to be better for the economy. All, I think the, the, for, <laughs> all for people keeping more of their hard-earned money. By no means do I suggest that I, I, I wouldn't want tax cuts for the middle class. We do. But the people who create jobs, the people who own businesses, the people who take risks, the people who do capital expenditures to expand plants, they have to hire people. They're going to get smacked. And, and we've, we've seen Democrat policies hurt that class of people, too.
I, look, I, I, I guess I would characterize that logic that you're describing. I, I do understand it. That was the logic that Donald Trump said why we should give a $2 trillion tax cut to high income people and big corporations. But I will remind you that that was the most unpopular tax cut in the history of American polling because people looked at it and said, wait, I didn't, I barely got anything. And there's 91 of the Fortune 500 corporations paid zero tax last year. And the president's a billionaire, he paid $750. So I, I think a system like that needs some reform for sure. All right, Austin, we're gonna leave it there. Um, we have a bet and uh, I, I think you and I both have a bet. I, 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 I'm gonna leave you on, I'm, this is really unfair, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make a comment about President Obama, who you work for, and I'm not going to let you answer because we ran out of time. I'm blown <laughs> away, absolutely blown away that President Obama said about Donald Trump on the campaign trail that he, Trump, inherited all the upside of the jobs that, that, that Obama created and the economy Obama created. Yet, when he, he came did. into office, he wanted no part of whatever he was given from George Bush. I mean, that, that, you can't have it both, you can't have it and, and cake and eat it too, Austin Goolsby. Great having you on. We'll see you again soon. Good to see you again, Eric.